Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hey, yo. So, and we'll give people just another moment or two here to join. Hi, Matt. Good morning. Good morning. Perfect. How are you? I'm well. All right. I think we right. have quite a good we do. program we have... right up today. We have Brian. Hi, Brian. Yes. Welcome. And we have Kara. Oh. Indeed. Uh, I'd like to quickly open the meeting. Uh, uh, welcome all. Um, uh, today is our February 20th uh, meeting of uh, 2024 of uh, TAG-CNCF TAG Observability. Uh, this meeting is a CNCF-sponsored event, uh, so the code of conduct does apply. Uh, please don't do or say anything that would be in violation of that code, and uh, it's nice to see you all. Um, I, there was a short uh, thing we wanted to put into the agenda that is very full, uh, that will only take about one minute, and Kara's here to, to say that briefly. Um, and then we're on. Oh, we don't have audio care. I think Kara, we can't hear you yet. Kara, we can't uh, hear you. So I guess we'll go uh, to the next speaker uh, uh, and then we'll come back. Uh, and <laughs> right. It's always the case. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, whenever you you need your audio to work, it's always like, oh my gosh, it's not working. <laughs> Kara, any any chance? Uh it'll come back. Otherwise, uh, should we get started with uh, Brian? Yeah. Um, and... So uh again, just Matt, uh just wanted to introduce Brian very quickly. Uh, and again, uh, thanks folks for joining in. I know folks are still streaming in, but let's get started. Um, so today we have a very exciting speaker, uh, Brian Borum, who is, you know, one of the core maintainers on Prometheus, as well as has for many years worked in the observability space. We're super happy to have him. Uh, a little bit about himself. Uh, again, Brian has been uh, a software engineer uh, over 40 years, uh, working in software startups, uh, large banks, as well as, you know, back to startups again. He is a distinguished engineer at Grafana Labs nowadays. And um, needless to say, he has actually been amazingly prolific in the areas of, uh, you know, really building out metrics observability uh, at scale. And with the uh, you know, that said, he's been focused on performance and scalability of uh, Grafana Labs projects as well as services, but also has been a prolific member of the Prometheus and Kubernetes projects as well as contributed to Panos, Cortex, and many of the other uh, projects that are related in the metric space. Right. So with much further ado, I will hand it over to Brian. Brian, take it away. So the, the real question is, is my audio working? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting some nods. It, it is working, I'm yes. Not, I, yeah, we, okay. we can hear you, yeah. So I I, uh, I brought some slides. Is that okay to, to put them up? Yes, please. Um, uh, so obviously I start with an AI-generated picture. Uh, this is... This is Dali's take on uh, Prometheus, the Titan, um, I guess, using a lot of chip power. Anyway, let's did, don't, don't focus use, too much on the detail. What, what did you use, Brian? <laughs> Which uh, it's da Dali through uh, ChatGPT. I see. Before. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> um, so I... Uh, I didn't really. Uh, well, I, I I still don't know if I got if I'm talking about the the, the stuff that's going to interest you. So I figured I I, I bring some slides and uh, uh, talk a bit and and then 
maybe it could turn into more of a discussion um if if people have particular areas they want to focus on um so that's that's my basic idea um there was some discussion over uh, whether I was talk, going to talk about how to scale Prometheus or best practices for scaling Prometheus. So I thought I'd, I'd better cover that off. And awesome. Very awesome. simple. Thank you. <laughs> uh, get a bigger computer. Um, <laughs> because uh, Prometheus is a single process. Uh, that's the design. And um, if whatever you're trying to do with it doesn't fit on your current machine, get a bigger one. Uh, so that's not a very interesting thing for me to say. Um, <laughs> I also, uh, I, Alita very, uh, said some kind words about me. I wanted to mention, uh, so I work a, a lot of the time on, on things like Mimir and Loki, which are, are kind of based on Prometheus, but uh, horizontally scaling it across uh, as many machines as you care to, to bring. Um, so that's not really what I'm going to talk about, or at least not what I prepared to talk about. Um, I uh, am currently the sixth biggest contributor to Prometheus. That's what that thing is doing there. Um, but yeah, so so sorry, that's the scaling part over with. Uh, Prometheus is a single process uh, design and will stay that way. And there's other things, Cortex, Thanos, Mimir, that take the basic structure of Prometheus and scale it horizontally. Um, so I do spend a lot of my work day in that area, but also on Prometheus. Uh, so I have done a couple of talks in the last year in this area, and I, I don't intend to repeat all of those. You're probably quite glad. Um, but uh, I put the links up um, to those, so there's, there's a, a certain amount of detail in those uh, looking at different aspects. I'm going to repeat bits of, of those talks because I'm very lazy. Um, right, Prometheus. Uh, I'm guessing most people know what's going on, but I thought I, I'd put up a quick sort of architecture diagram. Um, so we talk about scraping. It's a pool-based model bringing metrics from wherever they originate into Prometheus. Um, and we store them in memory in what's called the head block. Um, basically, we generate two-hour blocks of data and stick them on the disk through a process called compaction. Um, and then if you want to do anything with the data, look at it, visualize it, uh, that's, that's a query that's query handling within Prometheus. So that's the sort of 20 second tour, the right head log is in case it crashes. Um, that's Prometheus at, at the 20 second uh, level of detail. Um, why do we care? Uh, well, this is just an experiment I ran. Um, th this, this red line is, is the Kubernetes limit on uh, memory. For this thing and it was quite happy until I reduced the limit so it restarts and comes back up again and then at some point it hits that limit and it goes bang um crashes oom um, the oom um killer comes to call um so it starts up again and then th this is kind of the really pathological thing that that um most likely with Prometheus, once it's once it's hit the memory limit once, it's going to hit it again and again and again, and you're just going to have a, a bad day or bad week. Uh, so that's that's kind of that's the main reason why people care. Um, people who use Prometheus, especially if they have big estates, um, and uh, I put a lot of effort into trying to bring those numbers down on the chart. So that is is what I'm planning to talk about. Um, I thought I'd throw this slide up there. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, people ask me what I do. And for the most part, it consists of staring at the screen and sometimes scratching my head and 
sometimes bursting out with swearing and uh none of these things are things that people can learn from particularly um so i thought i i thought the purpose of this might be to uh educate how people learn things so th this this is kind of when i try and you know when i step back from the swearing and the and the straining mm -hmm. um what do we do we measure um metrics traces profiles it's observability right that's that's why we're all here the process starts with measurement um and then we make some kind of hypothesis you know a guess about what might help um if you're very diligent you then work with a benchmark and kind of iterate here for a bit and try and prove that your idea is a good one uh if you're excited you just go ahead and implement it um make one change uh because if you're really excited you're, you're going to fix like five things and then you're going to have no idea which one was the good one um so you have to you have to show a lot of self con self control and restraint here and then measure it again um so we go around this loop and i um I talked a lot in uh, the KubeCon Observability Day in a few months ago about the metrics side of this. So I'm not going to repeat that. Um, I uh, wanted to pull this one out. This was a good one. Um, because it's essentially anomalies are, are golden. Anomalies give you a an insight you see something i mean in this case the anomaly is this thing is is huge 250 well whatever that's the whole thing about which one of these lines is interesting but it's it's either 330 gigabytes or 260 gigabytes depending on which one you think is interesting it's massive um and there was a bug in it well you know whether you call it an optimization or a bug I fixed it and uh but so between prometheus 238 and 239 this particular scenario nearly halved um that was the transaction isolation part of prometheus um essentially the combination of that and the compaction process that i talked about earlier it kind of ran away with itself and 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 chewed up all this extra memory and um quite a finicky adjustment of how those things interacted uh, meant that we could we could bring it down to here um so that was nice um okay i am going to talk about profiles i like putting these kind of big messages on the screen because they remind me what i'm supposed to be talking about uh mm -hmm. and otherwise i might forget um so yeah, uh, I, I go. Prometheus is written in Go. Go lets you take a heap profile very easily. Uh, shows you where all the memory is going, um, and you can get a. This is a, a, a flame chart view. Um, this one's a bit ugly, really. You know, if if I wanted to show you a, a kind of impressive looking flame chart, I would have chosen a different one. But this is what Prometheus looks like when you do this. Um, and the basic idea with flame graphs is the width of the block. The, the bigger the width, the more memory. Um, or if you're looking at a CPU profile, the, the more CPU, but this is memory. Um, so I've gone ahead and added the things up uh, to make this a bit more interesting. Um, so this particular Prometheus queries were, and, and it's, you know, it's, that's the thing. It, it varies a bit depending on what you're doing and what your workload is like. Um, but also, it doesn't vary hugely. Um, well, outside of bugs and things like that. Anyway, queries were 9%. Um, the time series, holding the kind of the, the data structures that, that uh, set things up so the Prometheus can deal with time series were 14%. I'm going up here. Um, the samples themselves, which you would you, you would think, you know, if you, if you don't know anything at all about Prometheus, you'd think that the, the, the samples, the actual numbers that vary across time in, in Prometheus, 
would be the biggest bit because there's there's like billions of them um but actually they're extremely well compressed um so they were not the biggest thing uh the data structures involved in pulling in the data which which we call scraping they they were um well look at that it's nearly nearly twice the size of the samples um but the labels were the biggest um and that was surprising when, when i say label so each time series is defined by name value pairs that the this the set of unique name value pairs gives you the identity of a time series um so this is just a bunch of strings right um so that's kind of dumb uh Sorry, just to emphasize that. I mean, the strings look like this. Every metric has a name, and then it has some things that make it unique. Um, here's another series where the the thing that makes it unique is that it's got a different method. And here's one where the thing that makes it unique is it's got a different code. Um, so in real life, there's maybe 20 um, labels on each series. Well, you can have as many as you like, but uh, I, I would contend that you get into diminishing returns. Um, and we have this, uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. Like I say, I, I, I did cover this in, in more detail in one of my talks, but just to, to give you a kind of flavor of, of one of the very in-depth things that I, that I worked on. Um, basically, in the Go language, the, there's a bit of a more detailed look at how it goes in memory and um we've got the actual strings here um so this string is is three bytes you know, this one is five bytes and so on but there's this these uh headers defining where the string sits in memory and um in the go language they're they're 16 bytes each so basically these things were dwarfing the size of these things for for most uses um oh and i've actually put that on the slide so for this example it's 163 bytes and and the biggest contributor to that is this is this 96 in the middle it's the uh the go um string header and kind of foreshadowing the plot of this story um the obvious thing to do is is to deduplicate these strings because we've actually got you know however many times the word root appears in the in your metrics we've got that many copies of the, those five bytes um but the obvious thing to do which is to deduplicate those leaves this unchanged and this is actually the biggest thing um so what i did was oh, that's that's the pr 10991 um changed the implementation so that all the strings were in one string sounds weird worked really well uh so we've come down from 163 bytes to 65 bytes um at some amount of work uh because there was a tremendous amount of code that just assumed that the, the data structure it, it, it the go thing is called a slice um so it was a slice of strings Every, all this code assumed that we knew what that <laughs> was and, and we could just play with the data structure directly um so 2500 lines of code had to be changed just to be able to make that change in the data structure um which was a lot of work uh what else oh yeah and then and then we got on to the, so the next phase is to deduplicate the strings I'm sorry, I'm skipping very quickly here because I, like I said, I figure we could get into a discussion or or something. But just to tell you the story, um, this PR was opened nearly a year ago. It's still open. Um, it, it wasn't very good when I opened it. It was just a kind of first draft of the idea. Um, but uh, since I was doing a talk in October, oops, got ahead of myself. Um, yeah, I, 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 I kind of brought it up to scratch in October, uh, conference driven development and, um, 
Uh, so yeah, this is this is kind of well, like I say, it's an obvious thing to do to to deduplicate all your strings. Um, it's perhaps a slightly less obvious thing to do to uh, uh, to have multiple tables. It, these are called intern tables in in some cases. Um, uh, I didn't want to have a single lock on this table for the entire program um, because we we do like to use lots of CPUs in parallel. Um, so that's the, the basic idea. We have a lot of these tables. Uh, well, a lot, you know, hundreds, not millions. Um, and therefore, we tend not to lock the whole program on uh, any one of these tables. Um, so that's uh, back to the previous page. That's PR12304, uh, which is another thousand line change. Um, although th this time around, it's it, where it's mostly the actual implementation of the thing that, that is the change, not uh, not just changing the way people use the data structure. Um, there's a bunch of optimizations. I, I kind of went through and looked. Um, I also I don't want to give the impression I'm the only person doing this. I mean, there's there's like there's lots of people doing. You can see lots of different names here, um, doing optimizations to Prometheus, and these are just the ones in the last uh, I don't know four months or something like that. Um, so this is this is going on all the time. Uh, the very most recent release of Prometheus uh, two dot fifty. Um, there's more of a reduction of CPU. I, I, I've talked a lot about memory, but actually the 2.50 is is uh, much the same in memory and a, quite a lot less CPU. Um, yeah, this was this was what I put up in October. The the sort of my measurements uh, started at at 17 gigabytes and it came down to eight and a half. And I I titled the talk how Prometheus halved its memory. So if you want to if you want to see how I got the last point one of a gigabyte, then watch the talk. Um, okay, I mean that's basically what I came prepared with. Um, questions, observations, whatever. All right, friend, that's, that's great. Uh, this is a very good start, and and I think this will also. Um, get others to actually come come with their questions, ask questions. Uh, I think, Vijay, probably I would start with you because you've done a lot of work in optimizing Prometheus. Did you want to talk about some of the improvements you guys ended up making or uh, to uh, start? Uh, let me turn on my video. Uh, Brian, nice, <laughs> okay. to, uh, nice to see you. Uh, I know we have talked quite a bit offline about the exemplar support for recording rules. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to it one of these days, I promise. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think uh, uh, Brian and I, when he was first experimenting with this uh, 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 string labels feature, uh, we had uh, quite a few discussions about uh, string interning and how we use string interning internally to save memory. But I think uh, Brian has uh, taken it to the next level with these changes. Uh, and I think... Uh, uh, this conversation or this presentation uh, highlights why uh, uh, I think he was right to begin with the the overhead on the uh, uh, string headers. I think uh, uh, that that wouldn't go away even if you do interning and things like that. Um, so I think uh, yeah, uh, it's it's very exciting to see the kind of work that's going into Prometheus to uh, make some of these optimizations. I think in the long run, like I, I also am curious to know. Uh, what we are thinking about uh, things like the postings index, um, we uh, with the with the conventional time series database. That's that's one of the bigger contributors, and Prometheus has it uh, in memory. So higher cardinality is out of the question most of the time. So would like to see um, uh, what your thoughts are around that. Yeah, so I I was. I was I put this slide up because you're talking about the the postings index, which is something that's not on this, not written on this slide, but it it kind of lives here. Um, 
postings is one of these funky words that that <laughs> people. I mean, it, 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 it's an inverted index. It's, a, it's an index of all of those name value pairs that you can look up by value. And, and I have no idea why it's called a postings, but that's, that is the word that is used in the, in the art. Um, I will observe, yeah, where, so if I just do that, um, the postings index barely shows up. It's certainly not one of these numbers. Um, but you're right. The the part of the reason for that is uh, is people avoid uh, creating extremely high cardinality. Um, the, if you uh, that's that drives this number up. Um, the the series number. You know, if you if you double the number of series that Prometheus was dealing with, um, that that number was would double. Um, so uh anyway yes postings index um uh yeah we could do um we could do stuff with that i'm just sorry i'm just very long-winded way of saying it's not it's not obviously something that we would optimize next um but uh it certainly could be optimized um I mean, if you if anyone's looking for a, a fun task, I, I would say uh, optimize joins uh, on the on the query side um, because they're they're used a lot. They're likely to get used more uh, as as people as people deploy more open telemetry, and um, uh, the the implementation is pretty terrible as it stands. Why? Well, it's just naive. I have a question. So what do you think about Thanos versus Prometheus in, in that context? Because I know Thanos uh, solves some issues that uh, are related to that deduplication, right? So uh, what do you think about that? And also in general uh, about using Thanos versus using Prometheus for such purposes? So you, you might be referring to the Thanos wrote a whole new query engine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's certainly a bit better at doing joins. I don't think they did the, uh, uh, they, I don't think they optimize the selection of data. Um, sorry, I'm struggling. I'm trying not to get into the weeds here. Um, I mean, well, it's, you know, it's great, but, uh, that there's multiple, projects going along and, and you can kind of uh, choose which thing you want to do. Um, uh, Thanos takes a, a, a particular view on, um, on it, it's kind of more central role about, about providing a, um, a global view of multiple Prometheus, which is, is really what it's for that. And, and, um, uh, long-term storage in in something like S3, um, and we took a, a different view when we did uh, Cortex, um, which which I've worked on more. Oh, Cortex predates Thanos by two years, so kind of the other way around. They took a different view. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's great. Thanos is great. Uh, a lot of improvements to Prometheus have come from Thanos. Um, and and vice versa, um, and the the way that query engine works uh, is kind of uh, streaming by time step, um, and in in my kind of day job. Um, we already parallelized by time step, so that turns out to be kind of exactly what we don't want. We we have, we have another query engine which does streaming by series. Sorry, kind of um, for the benefit of the tape, I'm waving my hands around and trying to indicate that we turn this thing on its edge. If if you consider it like a rectangle, anyway. Uh, so yeah, there's there's um, 
multiple ideas being thrown around, but but actually none of them is uh, as as far as I know, none of them has done a better implementation of the join operator. So that's still out there. I think uh, Ren, you have another question. Oh, sorry, Dan, are you done? <laughs> okay. Sorry, Dan. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, Brian, I think you have another question from Charlie. Uh, he says, "Oh, is it Brian... in the chat? I don't have that open." Okay. Okay. I can read it out for you. Uh, I, I, okay. I've opened it now. Sorry. Where Where are we down to? Need. Uh, oh, okay. if you go down. Further, where, yeah. was, is it that one? Was there any? Measurable performance impact from the memory optimization. Oh, you mean like, does the CPU change? Uh, so that's an interesting question. Um, so in my talk in October, uh, my, I was asked the same question from the floor. Um, and what I said then was it goes faster. Um, and and that's a that's a defensible position uh, because of if you think about the the kind of memory architecture inside your CPU, um, if you generally using less memory, then more of it's going to fit in the cache, and um, and at that point in time, the various changes that have been released were not were not really doing more work. Um, so yeah, we got the, the kind of nice, uh, benefit situation of, um, less memory and less CPU, um, up to, well, and, and, uh, like I say, 2.50 has brought the CPU down again for like different reasons. Um, the, the deduplicating the labels adds an indirection, um, which, which kind of heads in the other direction. So, so. Uh, so that's been a, a, a bit of a battle, um, and I I think where we are today is the uh, that that PR is not merged. But if if you if you look at what happens after you merge that PR, the memory comes down quite a lot, like fifteen percent, something like that, and the CPU goes up fractionally, like two percent. Um, a lot of the optimizations that went into two point fifty actually came out of that of that battle of of um me trying to not make it worse uh while making it smaller um but yeah that 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 is that is, i mean you know engineering is all about trade offs and uh i guess what you might expect is if you squeeze down on one aspect of of the resource usage that it's going to bulge a bit in the other dimension um, so that's true a tiny bit in uh, in the deduplication change, um, but uh, the one before everything everything up to um, everything that's been released is actually both smaller and faster, uh, which was nice. Uh, how much? What kind of data? Ah, yeah, good question. Um, so. Well, the one big thing we do, there's a whole suite called PromBench, uh, which is which is integrated with our CI. Um, so we basically can go on to a, a, a pull request in GitHub and, and say slash PromBench, and, um, and it will run up Prometheus uh, with a bunch of fake web servers and so on. It, it will run up to Prometheus, actually. And so you could do a comparison against two different versions of the code. Um, so that, if memory serves, that's sitting around six gigabytes. Um, so, you know, it's not a trivial installation, but it's still smaller than most people's. Um, the, we have benchmarks at various different sizes uh, in the code. Um, and then the, the other answer to that question is I... Well, you know, everyone's free to take these things and run them up in their own environment and come back and tell me how it went. I I do that at, at Grafana Labs, so I uh, um, we are running Prometheus as a as a backstop because you know we we build monitoring tools and occasionally we put bugs in our own tools and they when uh, when they crash you have no tools because you 
killed your tools with your tools. Um, and uh, so we run Prometheus as a backstop for when we crash our, our uh, normal, our main uh, day job monitoring system, which is Mimir. Um, so I can run up uh, as a test. Um, and my that was the main kind of graphs that I've been showing, uh, which are coming down from 17 gig to 8 gig. That's one of our dev environments. And uh, the 240 gig one doesn't exist anymore because uh, we changed the way we do things. But but yeah, sorry, I'll stop rambling. No, that's that's my basic answer to the question. Uh, um, Chrome Bench is is the main kind of core thing that we do. Well, thanks, friend. So, Brian, I have a question on the, um, you said that, you know, these are some of the, the one, the diagram that you have right now, right? We're calling out some of the uh, main um, actors, if you will, who add to the, <laughs> the <villains>. size. <laughs> exactly. The villains actually <laughs> could call out um, to the, uh, just the size footprint, you know, of uh of of yeah. uh, how Prometheus works. So, what are some of the other, um, um, you know, medium sized villains who are, uh, who you would target next? You you, um, hmm. I'm sure have a list, and um, uh, well, like, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it it's kind of a continuous process that you you sort of stomp down on one thing and then the next thing becomes the biggest thing. So you stomp down on that and um uh and what it can be gratifying, I mean it's a little bit never ending, but but one of the yeah. things that happens is if if you um if you see something that's that's like five percent and you think, well, that's hardly worth bothering with. But if if over a long period of time you get rid of you know, twenty percent here and twenty percent there, and so on. then, then it it ends up that your five percent is now fifteen percent or something like mm -hmm. that. It's worth mm -hmm. tackling. Mm -hmm. Um, the uh, well, I've talked about joins, uh, which tend to be a big kind of ballooning thing on the query side. Mm -hmm. Um, the right ahead log is actually a big target of mine because because um, not just in memory. I mean, it does. It does tend to sort of when you when you fire up Prometheus after restarting it, it, it reads the right ahead log, and that mm -hmm. that tends mm -hmm. to be the main inflation in terms of memory. But it also takes a lot of time, a lot of CPU. Yeah. Um. So as a uh, kind of neat answer to your question, the the right ahead log, which is on the on the picture, is over towards the right. Um, is a target I'd, I'd love to uh certainly to get that to go faster right and and potentially to use less memory for for those that might not be familiar with the right ahead log and it's i mean it, you can it's aptly named functionally uh but uh might not be familiar with what you know the the central piece of the the problem is or what the current state is around you know where that runs into scalability issues, uh, and and what opportunities for optimization uh, there are. I think it's a concrete example of um, uh, some of the trade-off discussion you alluded to before. And maybe after after that, as a if there's time, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on how to collaborate. You know, in in open communities, uh, you know, around topics such as what should we spend our limited capacity to 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 make change for. Um, you know, where do we put our, where do we place our bets? Uh, so Brian, in, in, uh, good, good call out, uh, Matt, because uh, this kind of goes back to the, um, so I want to call out, Ryan, I don't know if you've seen the, I know you were part of some of the original discussions remember, on open telemetry when we were working on the interop, uh, you know, with uh, um Prometheus on the uh, protocol as well as the um, as well as the optimizations and the right ahead log, uh, you know, had a uh, fair bit of discussion and 
uh, optimizations that were suggested in the work groups that, um, again, I'm not sure if you have seen them, but I'd be very interested in getting your take on, um, you know, some of the suggestions for efficient right ahead, uh, for efficient walls, uh, you know, being uh, called out. Because I think they kind of, as you said, addressed the performance considerations very partially, but so, didn't quite address it, yeah, you know, probably in the I, way you have in mind. I think there there might be uh, two wells in this in this conversation. I mean, the, so the at, a, at an abstract level, what sure. what what um, what we're doing is is we're trying we're trying to uh, behave reasonably in in uh, in the case of a crash um and the crash caused by by bug or machine fail uh, yeah machine failure or power failure or anything like that the um uh so the basic idea is when when you've got hold of some data you you try and put it on the disk um yep. as quickly as you can uh you know immediately after you've got it you put it on the disk and that's why it's called right ahead because you kind of you're ahead of ahead of what you really wanted to do with the data you put it on the disk in this thing which is called a log because it's kind of boring it just it just has like data 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 very little structure to it so that's the the sort of abstract concept of a right ahead log i think when you talk about open telemetry um so this this picture that's on the screen just has the Prometheus one process, but if you if you had a um telemetry collector on this picture as well, it would be another process, and they right. would both have a wow, because we or they might, uh, we might be concerned that uh, either of them could crash, um, and uh, the case of the open telemetry collector, it's it's kind of collected some data and it the what it wants to do is send it on to something like Prometheus. Um, but in the meantime, it might crash, and and so right. we put it on disk. So there are really uh, two uses of the same word, the same abstract concept, but two different, two different layers. implementations. Yeah. Um, but it's still it's still very much the case. Uh, you know, disks tend to be the slowest things that we deal with in the sort of hierarchy. The the CPU mm. is kind of the fastest, and the main memory is in the middle and the, the disk is the slowest thing those those uh relative positions shift around a bit but um uh as a as a generic observation um uh so you you might well need to put effort in into just that aspect of it like like hitting the disk in the most expedient uh, most efficient way um and then there's there's how you actually deal with it, how you lay the data on disk. Like you you want to not use all of your disk for this thing, which is a relatively small part of your your life. Um, but you do want it to be efficient and go quickly and so on. And and um, I'm talking very general terms because it, it, it you know the details are extremely detailed. But mm -hmm. but yeah, there's I think there's still a lot of opportunity there. It's it's a uh trying not to use the word dangerous uh it, it, it it's a thing you know you can't you can't just sort of wade in there and hack around with it for a bit and cross your fingers so the 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 wow is absolutely central to the robustness of of one of these yes. systems under crash conditions um so so it's it's extremely critical to get it right and it's extremely hard to test it properly um so yeah, so, which has exactly uh, been our experience, Brian, on the uh, hotel side. Mm. So, um, it 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 has been, you know, pretty pretty tough to actually even test out some of the, um, you know, exceptions or the conditions. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, Brian, you have another question, uh, well, Brian. We, I was going to combine this with with something Matt said um, about about. Uh, contributing i mean so so ryan is 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 talking about a, a kind of uh the the very low level layout of of structs within the code and and yeah it's probably a good point it's it's probably a good idea um it uh so um 
So one thing you can do is kind of throw that idea out and hope that somebody else picks it up. Maybe someone like me might happen. Um, but the other thing you can do is is make the change yourself, right? If Prometheus is is open source, um, uh, you can you can um, open up the the Git repo and make your change and um, uh, make a PR. And then what we will do uh, is not much. Um, we will we will ask you about your benchmark. Um, so either uh, using there's there's probably fifty existing benchmarks within the the Prometheus code base. Um, so one of those might address the thing that you think you've improved, uh, and you and you could supply us with those results before and after, um, or you might have to write a whole new benchmark to kind of demonstrate the thing that 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 you think you've improved. And I'm sorry, I'm I'm kind of. I'm hedging uh, because we all, we all have these ideas, right? Oh, that's going to make it better. But you, you have to prove it, right? Even I have to do that. Everybody has to to run the benchmarks and just sort of say what happens. And sometimes it goes the other way. Sometimes you think you've made an improvement and you look at it and it's like, ah, oh, it's actually slower. Hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's the story. Um, make a PR, explain what you're doing uh demonstrate the impact with benchmarks and um it's, uh, it, it's much easier to get a 10 line pr reviewed than a thousand line pr um and like i say i have one i have one there that that i opened in april and i basically finished in october and uh i don't know when it's going to get merged because it's a thousand line PR and it's a huge amount of work to um, review it. Uh, so, so there's that consideration. But I, uh, yeah, I'm hoping I've answered both these questions now. Um, I mean, it's it's essentially with the the kind of CPU level micro optimizations. It's impossible to predict uh how anything is going to come out the 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 layers between you and the and the silicon are too many um and they do things that you would never believe uh so you just have to try it and see if it goes better or not yeah i agree because i think ryan also um it it's completely dependent on you know what architecture is being used under the hood for CPUs and how that. Yep. Yeah, my question there. was more for like um, in the scenario that you pulled up flame graphs, did you dive into the objects themselves to figure out where you could optimize or was it just, uh, did you look strictly at the the strings and notice that you had multiple string objects being created and conjoining those into a, a single struct or data object was faster? Um, I'm just curious to see if you went down the other path uh, before I go well, and for the, trestle for down the, it. Uh, for these labels, that that is the data structure. Correct, correct. Um, so there is nothing else except the strings. So that's what I changed. And that was uh, certainly when I started, that was far and away the biggest memory consumption inside Prometheus. Um, uh yeah i i, I mean the, the the other one the the series i don't know if i can get back to it quickly but the um uh this one um that's generally that's like one big structure and we we do spend a lot of time staring at that one and trying to squeeze bytes out of it and then every every six weeks someone comes along with something to add to it um <laughs> nice uh sometimes painful um yeah i i i mean i i guess my high level answer is where things show up in profiles is where i look okay. and, and so there's there's going to be uh well what prometheus 200,000 lines of code so there's there's like yeah. 190,000 places i've never looked I have a question. So you, when you use this profiler, it's usually like a, a continuous profiler that you get results during a huge amount of time, or is it just, you know, 
you use the profiler and then you know it can run in hours and then you 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 get it so how, how do you get the results um yeah that's a good question so uh, so the thing that's on the screen right now is a, is a point in time uh and and grabbed using the go api for for grabbing one profile at one point in time um uh we do run continuous profiling uh so for instance when we're running the prom bench um as part of our ci that, that i mentioned uh we run parka which is a continuous profiling project um, from polar signals uh at work we run pyroscope which is a continuous profiling program from grafana labs um and uh yeah i'm not i'm not quite sure i mean so these things change a bit over time what what is usually interesting well yeah i could i have i have some of these things over time yeah so you get this kind of pattern right that that's the uh compaction cycle which is a, it's building up a two-hour block of data and then flushing that to disk and then building up another two-hour block of data so certainly uh you know, you, you you need to know that, and you need to kind of look at, at the the peaks because that's where it's going to crash um, if you run out of memory. Um, so looking at it over time is is very important. Uh, if that's kind of if that's the 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 point of your question, then yes, absolutely. And and doing a lot of work with it, you have to kind of yeah think about these things. Yeah, j just to make sure that like you know that it, sometimes you can have a trend, and then it makes your decision much uh, stronger. And sometimes you know you just see the results, but they're not reflecting the old behavior. So that's that's what I was trying to understand. Okay. Well, I hope I hope I helped a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. All right, and I think we are on the last question here, Vijay. Um, did you want to call this out? Uh, yeah, uh, Brian, uh, I think uh, you mentioned that uh, you try pretty hard to squeeze out a uh, few bytes from the head block. Uh, one of the things that we have seen, uh, especially during rollouts, the number of stale series churned, uh, uh, the number of series churned quite a bit uh, to the point where we have always wondered where if uh, stale series can be compacted um, uh, right. before the next compact actually kicks in. Um, uh, yeah, is know. this a, is this a, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so, uh, historically in, in Prometheus, the, we couldn't have overlapping blocks. So you, so you couldn't compact a subset of what was in memory. You could only compact a, a time interval. Um, we added out of order data handling about a year ago. So it's no longer true that you can't have overlapping blocks so that, I've actually never thought about what you just said in that context. Um, uh, the other thing I would mention is that we have a thing in Mimir, which which is called early compaction, where basically we, instead of waiting two hours, we we can trigger a compaction after thirty minutes or something like that. If if this if this slope is is going up faster than we would like, and we we just sort of. Um, burn the extra disk and CPU and whatever in order to keep the memory under control. And at, by and large, we uh, upstream all of these things to Prometheus. So I don't know quite, I don't I haven't worked on that one myself, but that's another thing. But but what you said is is kind of more interesting to, to um, try and flush a subset and do that as an overlapping a block in time uh that's interesting yeah you should like put that in a github issue as a proposal or something like that okay that's awesome sounds good Thanks. cool 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 that's that's really a good session and um um so with that said i think are there any other questions i know we are a bit over time but would really love to thank brian uh for good good q a and I think Brian well, so addressed, addressed uh, some of the way that you wanted to kind of have the discussion, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's great. I like I say, I never 
I always start these things when I don't know what I don't know what I'm going to say, but it feels <laughs> which is good. I mean, you know, again, I think the idea is actually to have a good discussion and 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 really, you know, we're all working on Prometheus, you know, in one way or the other for metrics, and uh, it's really, uh, you know, super interesting to see some of the uh, actual implementation issues that you know often don't filter back to the projects themselves. So, uh, yeah. good stuff. But um, also, Matt, did sorry. you want to add? I was going to uh, say briefly. I, I, again, thank you. I, and it's really, I think, a great example of how a lot of times non-functional requirements uh, or other non-obvious things can really impact to the design that, that, as you said, is not evident uh, without without some context. Uh, yes. um, and and uh, lastly, I wanted to say uh, I've put links in the. Um, uh, document point of order, uh, 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 rather administration administrative. Uh, that I put uh, links um, uh, in the document uh, for the meetings uh, for the new working group that's launching on accessibility. Uh, there's a mail that's gone out to the CNCF list earlier this morning, and I think that thing uh, is run by uh, gerbils or hamsters on little wheels. So when when they finish running and the mails come out, you'll see. But uh, there are details there um, to a, a charter and, and over the next six weeks, uh, a call for contribution to. Uh, to help flesh out and scope it uh, if you're interested in accessibility for cloud native systems. So, um, cool. very cool. That's exciting. And then, then again, for folks who are interested, please, you know, go and check out the issue. Uh, Matt has a link there. And uh, again, yeah, it's, it's, it's always good to see, you know, groups, uh, work groups spin up focused on specific areas. So, with that said, Brian, thank you again. And we hope to see you at uh, KubeCon EU in a few weeks. And um, hopefully, yeah, you'll be there. Are you I'm presenting? In the, I'm in the room for the Prometheus maintainer session. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. So, we will definitely see you there. Cool. Thanks, everyone. And uh, hope to see many of you in KubeCon. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.